Is the upcoming indie life simulation game Paralives directly competing with The Sims? Could it be better? What would that mean for The Sims franchise? And what would it mean for us as the players? All this coming up. Hi, I'm Weezer and welcome to We Sims, an online community where I help simmers of all levels explore the Sims series and other simulation games in a fun and interactive way. Please press the like button if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already and clicking the notification bell. As a disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Paralives or the developers. I'm making this just because I'm curious about the game and I'm sure that other Sims players who have been around the block would be interested in it too. I've emailed the Paralives developer asking him a couple questions on information that isn't actually freely available. We'll see if he gets back to me. I would encourage you to watch to the end and to keep an eye out on my Twitter uh, where I'll be posting an update of this video. You could even just watch to the end now and see maybe if that hasn't happened yet. Paralives describes itself as an independently developed game that is single player and does not require an internet connection to play. It'll be released on PC and Mac over Steam and will also have support for custom content and mods via the Steam Workshop. According to its creator, Alex Massey, I hope I said that right, sorry if I didn't Alex, the game features an open world, advanced build tools like curved walls and split levels, as well as sophisticated character progression, pets and seasons and cars. Did I mention cars? and boats. The art style and just the general feel of what I've seen of the game uh, is that it appears to like be like an architectural software. I say as though I know what that is. I don't know what an architectural software looks like, but it reminds me of what I imagine architectural software looks like. Paralive started posting demos of the game in early July across its various social media platforms and has been catching the attention of pretty prominent Sims players as well as casual players and for good reason. It's a very free building experience with no limits as to how many curves or angles or how far they can be or anything like that. Everything about this game, from its website to the videos that have been released to the GIFs, I believe in GIF, show that this is a pretty loaded game and it's speaking the language of what Sims players have been requesting like split levels and curved walls and really diverse like building tools. So it's no wonder that it's catching everyone's attention, especially when you look at the feature list. It's saying all the magical words that simmers want to hear. The developer, Alex, is a professional game programmer and according to the website and his Patreon, he has also worked on games like PewDiePie's Tube Simulator. So he's not unfamiliar with what it means to create, a, to create a simulation game and according to his website and the Patreon accounts he is also a huge fan of simulation games. So although there have been demos of the building tools uploaded across the different sites, there has been something missing and that is the characters or the people or the avatars, the things that we will be simulating the lives of. There's been no actual portrayal or sharing of information about how they'll look or what kind of customization they're going to have. Um, at this point, the developer really just seems to be appealing to the building community primarily and not necessarily the storytellers. So we'll see as time goes on with them, we'll learn more and more about the characters and how they work and how we make them and how they live their lives. The game is in very early stages of development though, and there's no exact release date um, or release period that we can expect. However, it has been confirmed that it will be a one-time purchase and not a free-to-play kind of game. I'll leave a link to the official website in the description box so that you can check that out as well. This begs the question though, based on the fact that many of the features are magical words to the ears of simmers everywhere, with things like curved walls, split levels, pets, seasons, cars, these are, and open world, oh, the big one, open world. These are big things that are pretty much directly targeting Sims players, and I think that that qualifies this as 
a possible Sims competitor. Competition is really good. Simulation games are personally the only games that I consistently enjoy and The Sims has just been the highlight of that and my entry into that, but across the board I love simulation games. And the issue with The Sims being the only life simulator to the degree that it is and the most prominent brand in this niche is that they can kind of get away with stuff that they probably shouldn't. My First Pet stuff is a pretty good example of that from the past. And now the upcoming Mosquito, Moschino, Moschino. I'm just gonna say Mosquito because I'm a huge Plumbella fan and she said Mosquito stuff and now I'm saying Mosquito stuff. And Plumbella, if you're watching this, please can we be friends? Like, huge fan. And it's packs like these that cause me to question the intentions of The Sims at times because we're pretty die-hard fans and sometimes it feels like we're not thoughtfully considered in the decision-making process about who or how a pack should be distributed or content should be shared or whether something should even happen and they'll go ahead and do stuff like that and that's not just I'm not ripping on the entire franchise I, I couldn't do that the, the Sims has done too much for me and and I really do love what it offers me and I just think it's important to remember, especially for those of us who have a historical investment in this game, not just the amount of money we've spent on it, but actual emotional investment in it, that we let it happen. And we still buy the packs, and we complain, but we carry on supporting it. And it's not a really healthy relationship, because that's what happens when a company holds a monopoly in a niche, is that they can do that, because they know that no one else can do it better or they know that no one else will be able to give that same experience or is not offering the same experience and therefore they can do things that aren't necessarily in our best interests at prices that are almost certainly not in our best interests. So there's not been much competition in the past and that's what I'm excited about now because competition can really be healthy for everyone involved, both for the competitor and for us as the players. And I'm not going to go into this just because this isn't like a tech channel, but a really good example of this is what just happened with AMD and NVIDIA with the price matching. And long story short, when AMD makes products that are high quality at a lower price, it encourages competitors to also make higher quality products at lower prices. And that's in our best interests as the consumer. So that's what I'm excited for. Even if Paralives doesn't become the next Sims, I'm pretty sure it'll keep The Sims on its toes in some regard and maybe even push The Sims to be better across the board and, and to act more ethically with us as its players. There are a couple of things that I think Paralives needs to achieve if they want to be successful. I'm gonna group this into three groups of Sims players that I'm generalizing. Really, everyone is different and it is in all honesty a spectrum of people between the, these three camps. Um, I'm just broadly like oversimplifying from my own experience so my apologies if you feel I either did not represent you here or you feel too simplified. The first group refers to players who played The Sims for in the past and very actively decided to stop playing the game for numerous reasons and some of the biggest reasons in this category of players is that they played the previous versions of the game and The Sims 4, based on the way they play and the expectations they had, The Sims 4 just wasn't it and they left the franchise just altogether. But they're still life simulator lovers, some of them still play The Sims 3, some of them still play Sims 2 and even 1. Like, they still love life simulators but The Sims 4 just doesn't do it for them. So these people exist, and I think that Paralives isn't going to have much difficulty appealing to these people, because this group of players is looking for something new. They're looking for something different and like updated twofold that life simulation void, and Paralives could very well be the answer to that. So I think their marketing to this group would probably not need to be as aggressive, because I think that this group, having left The Sims franchise, and or at least left The Sims 4, pretty keen on something on something new and different and possibly better. The second category of players, and this is where I've put in, is 
players who are happy with certain aspects of The Sims 4, but not all of it, and like wouldn't rave about it as being the best Sims, Sims game ever, but we still enjoy it enough to stick around, but aren't, like we don't feel the same connection as what we did with previous games. And the issue for Paralives with this group is that we acknowledge that The Sims 4 is not what we want exactly, and we're not necessarily like okay with that, but there are parts of the game that we like, like for me it's building, and so we just like play with those parts of the game, and we kind of ignore the stuff that we don't. So for me, the gameplay, I, I don't connect with my Sims like the same way that I did before. I'll never forget the Sim, the first Sim I made in The Sims 3, her name was Athena Hale, and when she died as an elder after becoming a rock star, I cried. And I don't think I've cried once for any of my Sims in The Sims 4. And I don't think it's a thing of me getting older, I really just think that the depth of the game is different. But the issue with this group is that we acknowledge that The Sims 4 is not everything, but why are we here? We're here because The Sims is like in our DNA, like there is a huge feeling we feel towards The Sims series. So. I acknowledge this and I'm aware of it that The Sims 4 is not the same in that regard in the gameplay aspect as what the previous Sims games were. But I'm still here and I still play the game and I still support them and I still buy the packs that I complain about. Like I am part of that problem as well, 100% guilty. But I'm here and that's what Paralives is gonna have to remember when they speak to my group of... my group as if I own the group, no. And that's what Paralives is gonna have to remember when they appeal to this category of players, is that we're here be because we love The Sims, not The Sims 4, The Sims, and it means something to us. The Sims 1's loading screen alone is just, the whole run up to the start, the music that plays, the introductory video that I used, that like we all used to skip, but I still remember, like, frame for frame what happened. The Sims 2, with its just general craziness and everything about it, the complex multi-layered storylines, and The Sims 3, just the real depth and openness of gameplay. And those are things that are not, are not tangible, they are the emotional links to the series, and Paralyx is gonna have to really pull some some of its own unique humor that's gonna make me be like, wow, actually, yeah, this game makes me feel really good and I actually feel very happy with it. I mean, there'll never be a replacement for The Sims. The Sims is its... The Sims is The Sims. There's nothing actually more I can say about that. But Paralives could very well still pull players like myself who have that nostalgia and who have that connection to The Sims, but they could still bring us over by showing us a better gameplay and something that still appeals to that weirdness and uniqueness and quirkiness that The Sims offers, or offered, rather. Then there's the third group of players, and this is the group of players who are pretty happy with The Sims 4, like all over. They, they love the gameplay, they love the building, they love the storytelling. Everything about it is pretty good for them and this group of players I think can be subdivided into people that are really happy and therefore aren't looking for anything else. Like Paralives just isn't even going to be an option for them because there's nothing that it offers that they want. But the converse to that is that there are also people in this category who are very new to The Sims and they don't necessarily have the same bond to it and are not held by the same, uh, the same leash that those of us who are emotionally attached to the brand um, they're not held by that same limit, so if Paralives looks better, they're gonna go. Like, what do they actually have to lose by not playing The Sims 4 anymore and playing Paralives, which looks better for them? So obviously all of this can be super, like, tailored and individualized to each person and the decision that they make. Personally, I'm really excited for the game. Um, I look forward to trying it out. It may very well be super different to The Sims and actually appeal to a whole different side of The Sims, The, the Sims, The Simmer, The Simmer, The Us. The, the people that play the game and therefore be successful in an independent way. So overall I think the competition is a really positive thing and I think that it's a positive thing for us as the players because I think that it shows EA that there are people out there who recognize the deficiencies of the game and are working actively to make it better. 
So it may push EA to actually improve the game and encourage them to be a bit more cautious in the decisions that they take and the impacts that it could possibly have on us as the players. Paralives is still in very early development. I mean, they just posted their first photos at the start of July and there's still a lot of time before it's going to be a final product and a lot of games change a lot during the development process and they're promising a lot of things that are just magical words to the ears of simmers and I said this before but things that especially Especially the first group of, pe of people who left the game because there's no open world or color wheels. There are people looking for something more and I hope that Paralives in all sincerity delivers that and gives those, that group of people that same simulation experience that they so badly are looking for. There is also the possibility that this is all hype and we actually don't get the stuff that we're looking for. But this is an experiment and it's still an exciting time and I look forward to following the journey. Question of the day. What do you think of Paralives? Is it too good to be true? Do you think it's something that the Sims should keep their eye on? Let me know in the comments, I look forward to reading them. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and press the notification bell if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Sul Sul! Hi everyone, it is the 16th of July today and I recorded this video a few days ago. And I've received responses from the developer of the game, Alex and he was super awesome, got back to me fairly promptly. This was just the first opportunity I had to actually record. Um, and these are the questions and the answers that I asked, uh, so stay tuned. So I asked him a total of six questions, and some of them are a little bit more detailed than others, and some of them got more comprehensive responses than others. And that's just the nature of how this is. So the first question that I asked him was, do you envision Paralives to be a direct competitor to the Sims franchise? Or is there a specific niche in the simulation gamer population that you're trying to appeal to? And his response was as follows. Paralives is in the same genre, which is a dollhouse simulation game. I'm hoping to innovate on both the build tools and the simulation to make it distinguishable from other games in the genre. The next question was, I see the game is in early development. Do you have an estimated timeline that you're aiming for? For example, a completed product in the next one, three, five years, just so that we as a community know what to expect. And his answer was, I'm still planning the long-term timeline for the release of the game. So all I can say for now is that it won't reach the alpha state this year. My next question was, will there be an age restriction on the game? And will it be family friendly? What level of maturity does he anticipate it'll be geared towards? His answer was that it would most likely have a rating of 13 plus or teen, and that the goal is to avoid mature themes like murder and drugs. Sorry if I'm a bit sniffly um, and sound funny, I, I got sick very quickly. What is your general business model? Will you be releasing a once-off game with all discussed features included from the start, like pets and seasons, and regular patch updates, or will it be similar to The Sims model, which is which has purchasable DLC, downloadable content for a base game? And his answer was that the game is a one-time purchase and will have very few DLCs, if any. We're aiming to continue supporting the game with free updates after release. The next question that I asked was, based on what you've shared on social media so far, it looks like there's a strong emphasis on sophisticated building tools. Will there be a similar kind of emphasis on the characters that we'll be playing with in terms of their design process and gameplay, or will the game be more centered on providing a really advanced building experience? His response was, the game will have an equal focus on build tools and simulation gameplay. I started the development by working on, a, on the build tools, but more and more gameplay elements regarding the simulation aspect will be shown as I progress, which is really exciting. The final question that I asked was, will the characters age through life stages, like from toddlers to elders, or will it be focused more on young adult life simulation? And his answer was, character life stages and characters in general will be revealed in the coming months. So there's a lot to be excited about, guys. He is an independent developer working on this project by himself. I would highly recommend that we all check out his Patreon and try and help where we can. I'll leave a link to that. Um, wait, it's my left. I will leave a link to that uh, in the in one of these cards that pop up. Um, so give it a go if you are interested in supporting Alex and the Paralives team, which is him. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one. Sul Sul!